Um, okay, uh, Slaughterhouse Five is an iconic classic by uh, Kurt Vonnegut, and it tells the story of Bobby Pinkerton, who becomes unstuck in time. Welcome to Gunpowder Fiction and Plot. I'm Scott. And I'm Nell. Uh, we've decided to take the clown makeup off today and we're discussing Slaughterhouse Five by Kurt Bonnier. Everyone's gonna like, go look through our videos for the video where we've got clown makeup on and it doesn't exist. <laughs> no, no, it's totally there. Watch them all, please. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, Slaughterhouse Five is an iconic classic by uh, Kurt Von Jurg, and it tells the story of Bobby Pinkerton, who becomes unstuck in time, or spastic in time, as the book says, which I found an of interesting... Of course, it's a little taboo word that you just it makes Scott giggle, I can see. It did, yeah, it, it really, it, it struck me as, as how this word has changed since he wrote yeah, in the 60s. Yeah, for sure. Um, I struggle to classify this book. It's it's a really weird book. Like, it's kind of sci-fi and kind of other things. Yeah, autobiography, war. A book classification is stupid. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> but, um, but it's one of those books that it's it's got a lot of different things in it. So if you only read one or two genres because that's what you like, chances are that you, you'll like this book because it's it's weird. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's, it covers a lot of, ticks a lot of boxes. I really enjoyed this book. Um, I thought that it was good brain food. Um, I thought that it was super engaging and I totally gave a shit about the stories. Uh, I felt like it, I say stories because it's a bit episodic, um, and, and it's, so it goes. And so it goes. Um, and there's a bunch of timelines that sort of you flick in and out of because he's um, spastic in time. Um, so he's while he's jumping around timelines, that that gives it a real disjointed feel that that I actually really enjoy. I think it. Um, it creates a sort of a false suspense in, in shorter storylines. It's the sort of thing that I normally wouldn't like. I'd normally find that just unnecessarily confusing to the to the story. But in this case, I, I really did like it. I found it easy to follow. It was almost like Billy aged 20 and Billy aged 50 were different characters. And I could just, I can see how they would eventually intertwine later in the story, you know. and and that was quite good. Um, I, I definitely felt like the whole thing was quite well executed. Like it's, it's the kind of thing that in the wrong hands would just be confusing and a bit bewildering, but but it was it was put together beautifully. We've not said a lot about the book yet. We've sort of skated around saying anything. Um, so Vonjerk, when he came back from uh, one of the wars, I think it may have even been World War II, yeah. wanted to write an anti-war novel, and it's it's quite an autobiographical book. Vonjerk is weirdly present in all of his books, which is But this one is bizarre. particularly about a, a, a point in history that, that not many people were witness to in the sense that not many people survived the bombing of Dresden. Yes. And um, and he did. So it was something that if you read the foreword and all that sort of thing, he, he said it took him like 50 odd years to, to spit out uh, his, his written account. And, and it was, and it's taken the form of this really surrealist, um, almost science fiction novel. And it, it's brilliant because it, it makes you question what is what is real because at one point they're in an alien zoo as exhibitions and the next point he's talking about the bombing of Dresden and you, what's real and what's not real and and it's not like they're the two extremes because he's he, you know he has all sorts of a scale going on I think also he's just he he's taken what is 
quite a traumatic topic for him and, and potentially for the reader and made it much more digestible by by creating these episodes and by diluting the really hard bleak nature of that particular occurrence with like absolutely ludicrous things like like an alien zoo crazy yeah um it's a short read it's it's something that um you can easily read it from start to finish and just start again and keep going and and you can uh, do it on a loop if you wanted to. I definitely think that I'd like to do a reread and do a bit of a closer read of, of this book. I feel that there was a lot that I left on the page that I didn't pick up the, in the first reading. Um, it was... It, it was much more complex than I anticipated. Um, yeah, and I think Bonnet's a really clever writer. Um, I like how he uses the phrase, and so it goes, to let you imagine what happens in in scenes, you know, like, you know, you, you, at a car crash, he's like, and the car hit the pole, and so it goes. And he uses it in so many varied um, instances that it starts to make you question what constitutes a death, whether an object can die, whether an animal can die, like what what is a death that is worth marking? How how is a fox's death different from a person's death, different from a car that's dead? Etc. Yeah, that's really Yeah, there's yeah. some quick impressions, it's nothing too in depth today, but I enjoyed it and I would recommend. Yeah, highly recommend this for anybody that enjoys smart books. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's us, that's our review of Slaughterhouse 5. Uh, remember, ideas are more powerful, they're more powerful than a nice set of boobs in an alien jail. Mm -hmm.